It is a quite an undertaking to get an episode from Japanese into English, but we have a top-notch crew of translators and adaptive writers to make that happen. Translators work with a script in Japanese, and they also have the manga in Japanese on hand just for cross-referencing. So having the full manga uh, laid out in front of you is ultimately getting the script, you know, uh, a year and a half ahead of time. So this is perfect. This is exactly what an adaptation team would need to be able to bring that story over as calculated as the story deserves to be told in English. What's wonderful about our translation crew is that they don't just say, okay, here's a translation. They will give us copious notes about why something is translated the way that it is, if there's some Japanese wordplay involved, or even a word that doesn't exist in English that the Japanese use, they will go into detail about how it's used and why. So I think the writers are going to have a much more interesting job to do this time around, telling full, complete stories with knowing where it's going and knowing what these arcs are and knowing how to tell it. Because if you don't have the words on the page, you don't have anything to do. So we have Bonnie Clinkenbeard, who's a longtime writer for Funimation. Uh, Jeremy Kratz, who's also fantastic and worked on some really important titles uh, for us. And they trade off every other episode. So um, we've got some really good eyes on these scripts before uh, they even hit the booth. It's really wonderful how they're able to transform what, what on paper or just words on a page as a translation might seem stiff and truly bring them to life in a way that is, this is how we talk. This is how we would say it. So we get that script into the booth, and sometimes it's not exactly right timing-wise, because a writer, they aren't the actor. The actor might say things faster or slower, so we adjust. And then sometimes Laura, John, Eric, Jerry, they know these characters. They've been playing them for a long time, so they go, I don't think, I don't think they would say that. Like, oh, what would they say? And we might change it. When I'm walking into the studio as an actor, uh, I'm trusting my director implicitly to use me as the color that, that I can provide uh, onto the audible painting they're putting together there. The simuldub process, it is very different because before, like, they were able to bring you in for maybe, like, five or six episodes and like do it all in one go. And like you would have a very immediate propelled emotional arc with this character. And now with the like one episode a week sort of thing, it's easier in some ways because you're not going full force for like four hours in one day. Well, some people are, but this way, it's kind of jarring, like, waiting a week and being like, I haven't done the voice of this character in a week. I'm definitely going to need a reference. To wait, coming in uh, on a on weekly basis, that's, that is tricky. Uh, I remember when uh, the simuldub concept was first coming around and, you know, we were all challenged with that. It sounds exciting, but tough to maintain a schedule like that. I mean, you really have to maintain your availability, so it's, it's challenging. You gotta be ready to suit up, show up. I think the most unique challenge to this uh, production in particular is that our lead doesn't live here. Uh, Laura Bailey, who plays Toru, lives in Los Angeles. And while we're pretty accustomed here at Funimation to utilizing uh, Source Connect to record remotely, it's hard when your lead has so many lines. So the unique challenge has been, well, how do we get Toru? <laughs> and uh, thankfully, I've been able to go to Los Angeles for um, a couple of days every month or so, and we'll knock out a bunch of episodes at a time. So that's been probably the biggest challenge, uh, but at the same time, it's really rewarding and it's fun to go back to what we directors affectionately call the old style, the way we used to work, which was, you know, three or four episodes at a time. It seems like there's more hype about the seasons that are coming out because you can really, like, engage with the fans on a specific episode and be like, oh my gosh, you guys better watch out for the next episode and kind of tease them a little bit. And so there's a little bit more interaction between the fans and the, and the actors, I think. The sooner you can get content for fans out there, I feel like, the better. To have weekly episodes just available to you, just feed me, feed me, feed me now. I, I think it's phenomenal. 
Certainly on something like this as a producer, it fills me with a great level of confidence to know that both the adaptation team as well as the voice director, engineering, and all you know the mixers, everybody's got access to everything. So the story is not a mystery, which is a bummer from a spoiler side of things, but from a prepared side of things and being able to hit beats early in the franchise that will then be echoed back later in the franchise and to hit those with the amount of honor you can when you've got this kind of information, that's the kind of stuff that really brings the magic out on screen. That's how we do it. <laughs> line after line, take after take. But these guys are pros. We usually get things in one or two takes. That's really a testament to the quality of the writing. Because if they weren't matching it up uh, well enough or if they weren't able to um, get it to go from this line to this line and make it sound like these characters are actually talking to each other, we couldn't work that fast. So with that being said, I mean, let me encourage you to be there every week. You're gonna get to see a new half hour story unfold uh, that's gonna be going places it's never gone before.